There's two reasons why you're listening to this today. One, you know me and support me. Or two, you're a nosy old shy. Either way, I'm happy to have you. Listen to episode three of the Unedit podcast. Do you think you can handle it? Do you think you could? Do you think you could handle it? Do you think you could? So, today I am flying solo. And there's many reasons for that. I have a couple of guests and I have many different topics that I definitely want to share with you. But today... I wanted to jump on and talk to you about the real stuff, the real story and what went on this week. And for me, I had the fear. And if you're not familiar with the fear, but I'm sure most of you are if you're listening to this podcast, the fear is a real thing. You wake up after a night out, you feel all over the place, you're knackered, you're tired. Why did I do it? I'm never drinking again. Never again, I believe, is the comment we say time and time again. And this week, it was definitely a never again for me, but... What I've noticed is I've only been out twice this year, once in February and once again last week. And although I enjoyed myself and we all deserve to go out and let loose, I just don't really have time for the hangovers anymore. Like this week in particular, I wasn't as productive. I was really, really tired. I didn't get as much as I wanted done. And that just is not fitting into my life right now. And I suppose that's okay, but I just kind of wanted to share it with you because I'm after coming so far now that I'm acknowledging the fear and I'm knowing exactly what to do with it. Because sometimes there has been times when that can get in on you quite a bit. And you can start to overthink and, you know, be a bit hard on yourself, which is just ridiculous. So with the fear, another thing that can happen is if you have anything else going on for you, that can then become intensified. Like, for example, I have loads of shit that goes on with me all the time. And one of the biggest things is the grief that I have. So... The loss for me nanny and me aunt as well. The loss that I have for them both, it, it can seep in when you're en- at any time of the day. But when you're more vulnerable, you're definitely more susceptible to feeling them emotions and feeling them harder. So how do I get myself out of that? Well, sometimes you have to feel the emotion and just go with it. Like it's so important to be aware of your body. Like if you need to cry, cry. If you need to laugh, laugh and don't feel bad about it. That's just natural. You have to go with your natural emotions. But remember, the fear is not a natural emotion. This is all artificial. This is going to go away. So it's just intensifying all those things that you already have. So, for example, with my nanny, if I find myself going into a really kind of downward spiral with it, I always pull it back to who she was, what sort of person she was, how vibrant, how inspirational. She was a total go-getter. Like, no matter what was going on in her life, she put her best foot forward, her brightest lippy on, and she went out and stole the show. And she is my biggest inspiration. And I know that she's watching me. I know that she loves to watch me. And there's not a hope in hell that I'm letting her down. So when I feel myself going in and dwelling on the fact that I have to live in this world without her, I remember that I am living in this world because of her. And I will not waste a minute of it. And I will make her proud. So that is, that's just how I get myself out of it. And I hope it helps you. If you've ever lost anybody and you are feeling like that and you find it hard sometimes to bring yourself back, remember the loved one and honour them. And think of how, what if they are watching you, what do they want to see? So, for example, like, how do you get rid of the fear? Because it comes in in any way, no matter what you're tired No matter what, you're a little bit embarrassed because you're like, what did I do when I was highly intoxicated? But look, let's be honest, that old saying of the truth comes out when you're drunk is a lie. Absolute shy comes out when you're drunk. So do not beat yourself up about it. There is not a hope in hell that anything I say on a night out is meaningful whatsoever. It is absolute crap. (laughs) And that's the truth. But how do we get rid of this, like, bit of embarrassment like feeling like you let yourself down a little bit you just acknowledge it you realize it's just a hangover you went out and you let go of all your restrictions and you let everything go and you had a ball and yeah you just can't be hard on yourself about it but how do you get rid of it well you start to do the things that make you feel like you so for example I love going to yoga I love walking out And I love spending time with family. So that's what I did this week. 
I got up, I got dressed, I got going and I went to yoga and I found a bit of clarity and cleared my mind and I moved my body and I felt a hell of a lot better. And eventually I came back to myself. So here I am Saturday night with a podcast needing to go out tomorrow chatting to you because that's what I love to do. And I'm back, I'm back to me. So I'm definitely at a place where I'm like, not never again, but not anytime soon. It's just not for me. So my advice is, if you go out on a night out and you have an absolute ball with your friends and you wake up the next day worrying about what you did and who said what, just acknowledge that it's all superficial. It is not real shit. Let it go, move on and do what makes you feel like you. End of. Now, next topic I want to discuss is two encounters that I had this week with two very different women. Neither of these women I know. However, they both made an impact on me one way or another. So, for example, one woman I see an out and about shopping and I recognize her and I'm sure she's familiar with me and I greeted her with a hello, how are you? And she looked straight through me, probably even looked me up and down. Now, I don't know, maybe she just doesn't like me, but surely to God, you don't know somebody, so you can't not like them, right? That's my thought process, and anyway. So that was the sort of energy that I didn't really want to surround myself with, so I moved on and proceeded with me shopping. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't really give her another thought apart from, that was quite rude. Then, during the week, I went back to my yoga class, and when I was there, I was late, because I was obviously riddled with the fear. And I stumbled across this other woman who was also late. And she said to me, are you in at the 10 o'clock class? And I said, yeah, I am. So we sloped in together, not knowing each other, never met each other before. But we kind of made the little pact in that moment just by looking at each other that we were in this together. You know, we'd go in there and take the heat off each other by arriving together. So we went in and I found myself a little perch and rolled out my mat and put my stuff to the side and went over to get me items that I needed because the yoga instructor had advised that we needed a bolster, two blocks and a resistance band. Now, as I walked over to get the items, there was that woman, that woman that I had never met before and did not know, coming towards me, absolutely strangled, with two bolsters, four blocks and two resistance bands. She went out of her way to get me them items, to help and support me during that time. Never met me before, but was just being considerate, kind and polite. And it made me think of that other woman and how their personalities differ or how they made me feel, how different it was. And I just thought, that is the sort of woman that I want to be around. That is the sort of woman that I chose to be. And it makes you think, doesn't it, like... I don't believe that people are naturally, like, unkind. I I do believe that things are just going on for them. They probably have situations in their life and it's after making them angry or bitter or maybe they have a lifestyle that's just not making them feel good. Whatever it is, I choose to believe that people are not that unkind. But maybe I'm being a bit delusional, I don't know, but that's how I like to think about it. So it just makes you think about what you should do to make yourself feel better. And I think being nice makes you feel better. I think being kind makes you be kinder. I think saying nice things to yourself and other people creates a lovely positive energy. And both of them women gave me very different energies. And I know exactly the one that I would rather be around. I just wanted to highlight that because it really stood out to me this week. And to the woman in the yoga class, thank you very much for feeding yourself. Now, what do I mean by feeding myself? I don't mean what she's having for her dinner. I mean how she's choosing to spend her time. Like going to yoga. Maybe she eats well. Maybe she listens to upbeat music. Maybe she's just kind and nice. I don't know what she does, but whatever she does, it's good and it's working and it has a nice positive effect on herself. And to the other woman that I see now chopping, I hope you find your happy place. Let's move on. So I had another encounter during the week. This time it was a client. I was in the shop and she came in and she was a first time client. So we were getting to know each other and she asked me how long I'd been with my husband. And I told her the length of time. So I've been with him since I'm a teenager. So I'll give you the, I'm told you one now. So it's quite a while. 
And she asked me what was the secret. I told her walk. She was kind of quite surprised that that was my answer. And she's like, oh my God, that's so true. But I've never heard anybody say that before. But it is walk. You know, yes, we're in love and of course we fancy each other. But you have to walk on each other. And there's many different factors that make a relationship walk. And especially throughout a long period of time. I had a great aunt who was married for 60 years to her husband and they had this amazing relationship. They absolutely adored each other. But the thing that stood out for me the most was how much of a team they were. So when she used to come over from England and she'd stay here with me, with my uncle, I asked her before, like, how does it work? Like, how do you last? How is this happy all these years? And she said, it's respect. It's giving each other respect and it's putting each other first. Now, she doesn't mean that you put each other before everybody else. She just meant that you consult with each other, that you consider each other. And when you're choosing to be in a relationship with somebody, that's exactly what it is. It's a choice. You're choosing to be together. You're choosing to create and build this life together. So if you're going to do that, you have to make sure that you put the work in. You cannot expect it to be all butterflies and rainbows without putting in the work. And let me tell you, when you do Life is so much sweeter. We very rarely bicker. We very rarely argue. Um, We have confrontations and we have debates and we don't always agree on everything, but we communicate and that is the most important thing and that's what works for us. Like, for example, this week, me being with me hangover and having the fear, he asked me to pass him something. Now, I can't remember what it was. It was some item or whatever. He said, well, he would give us that there. And I was like, I fuck off you. That was my reply. That's how I swiped back because of what I was after feeding myself, how I, what I was after doing to make my personality differ. I was in a more negative headspace. I was tired. I wasn't arsed and I didn't even have the energy to reply more politely. But what I did was I was very aware of that's why I was the way I was. So I said, do you know what? I'm sorry about that. That's just a hangover. I'll get it for you now. Now, equally, I'm not saying you have to jump if somebody asks you to pass or something. You could have, I could have easily just turned around and said, I'm knackered. Can you get it yourself? <laughs> but there's a lot nicer ways to say it. I just meant the reaction. Why did I react like that? Why did I swipe like that? And it was because I was hung over. It's interesting, isn't it? But I had the consideration. I had the respect to correct myself. Because he didn't deserve to be spoken to like that. That was my thing. That was my actions. That was how I was feeling in my head. He simply just asked me to pass him something. So I had consideration, respect for my partner in that moment. And even them tiny little moments in your life together go a long way. It's the environment. Like, it's the environment that you live in. It's the environment that you want to create for yourself. Since I was very young, it was very important to me that my home life would be just the way I like it. I like it bright, I like it airy, I like everybody being complimentary and sweet to each other. Now, I mean, it's not the Waltons, we're quite normal. (laughs) However, I just, I don't like huge, huge confrontations. I don't like heavy anger or hatred. I don't allow any of them feelings to come into my home. Because I've seen enough of that throughout the years in my own family and other people's. So it's very, very important to me that I live in a house where I can just breathe, be myself and everybody feels very comfortable. And that comes down to who you are, what you do for yourself and what you do for each other. And it's really, really important. So I didn't necessarily explain all of them details to that lady, but I did highlight the fact that you have to have respect for each other and you have to consult with each other, you know. And she was like, I love that. I appreciate it because I totally get it. Like she was in a relationship for eight eight years. She's still in that relationship now. And she actually said that she was in the middle of an argument. And an interesting point that I gave her when we were talking I was saying one thing we do in our relationship is if we don't feel like we're connected, like we're not on great terms or we're just not kind of like feeling it with each other, we'll arrange to make a date and we'll go out with each other. Whereas I've seen people in relationships before and they what they do is they go out and they separate. So one might sleep on the couch, one might go back to their mass for a week. You know, like I always found 
in my relationship that separation just creates more separation. And that's just not something that me or him is willing to do. So if you want to connect with each other and you want to be closer to each other, make time for each other and see each other. Like actually look at each other, see each other. Because as soon as you turn your back on each other, your mind gets clouded. Your vision becomes unclear and you do not see who's standing in front of you. And sometimes you're creating these voids that are not even there. That's my observation on what I've seen in other relationships. And I just didn't want that for mine. So in that saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. That could contradict what I'm saying. But I don't actually believe it does because I don't look at that as in what I'm saying. So say, for example, I'm saying if you're not connecting or you're not really feeling each other, I don't believe that separating or taking some time out is the best thing to do. Well, it's not in my house. Whereas absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's kind of more so if you're separated through no choice of your own, then it can definitely make the heart grow fonder. But I do believe if you're trying to reconnect and be together and make things work or just bring back that spark, being together, spending time together is what works. That's what makes the heart grow fonder, in my opinion. Now, there's a couple of different things that help with the relationship as well. Now, consulting each other. What do I mean by consulting each other? There's a difference. Consulting each other is not asking for permission. One is not in control of the other. That Once you feel like you have to ask permission to do something or go somewhere, you are no longer in a relationship. That is a totally different thing that nobody should be in. So consult each other. Like, let them know. This person cares about you. You care about them. So you want to know you're safe and sound and you're happy out and you're not putting yourself into any dangerous situation. So check in. Like, let them know if you're going away for a weekend or you're staying out that little bit later. Just let them know. As long as you have love and respect and trust for each other, there's absolutely no issue and there shouldn't be because you are not in control of each other. You both choose to be together. And that is exactly what it is. You choose each other. So choose yourself first. Never lose your identity in a relationship. Remember who you are. Remember what you enjoy doing and do what makes you happy. And allow them to do what makes them happy. And result of that, you come together and you walk together and you enjoy each other so much more. That's what works for us. I suppose that's the secret. So the nanny mantra for the week goes to my daughter's nanny, which was my mother-in-law. And I think about this every single time I go field shopping. So, you know, when you're going around and you're in like Tesco's or Aldi or whatever it is you shop and you're like, do I need milk? Do I need bread? (laughs) Her voice literally is embedded into my head. And she used to always say, it's better to be looking at it than looking for it. (laughs) So thanks to her, I am never out of any milk, any bread or a tea bag. Now, I will be here again next week. Hopefully I'll be on time and I might have a bit of company. So join me if you're not easy enough. Do you think you could handle it? Do you think you could? Do you think you could handle it?